The Atheist Debates Patreon Project presents Two-Headed Animals. What's that about? So many of you know that uh, in addition to all the other things that I like to do, I also have a exotic pet breeding uh, hobby slash business. And I love reptiles. And over the years, I've been fortunate to see reptiles with multiple heads. There's a uh, two-headed corn snake, for example, in that picture. Um, this is a two-headed, I think it's a Honduran milk snake. We have, we have an albino Honduran milk snake that looks about the same, uh, except ours doesn't have two heads. This is a turtle with two heads. And it's one of the areas that are um, most frequently reptiles and turtles are the or seem to be species that allow this a lot. Um, there's suspicion that maybe it's due to inbreeding or in breeding in the pet trade. Uh, we don't breed enough animals here for me to even expect us to be likely to produce twins, let alone producing a pair of twins that are conjoined like this. But what struck me the other day is that when we're describing uh, polycephaly, which is the state of having multiple heads, um, we tend to think of non-human animals and describe non-human animals as, here's a two-headed snake, here's a two-headed turtle. We don't do that when polycephaly occurs in human beings. And we tend to refer to humans as conjoined twins. And the issue then becomes, is this one person with two heads of these two people who are conjoined at some location. And it's complicated because we don't have good definitions for everything. And we definitely have a bias um, that is in favor of the brain being the seat of intelligence and the identity. And even if we talk about souls inhabiting hearts and things like that, we're still talking about two headed other animals versus conjoined twin humans. Now, conjoined twinning is an, an absolutely interesting field, and I'm not a biologist, uh, so I'm not going to be able to you know, go into all the details about it, but there are so many different categories of conjoined twins, and they're, they're often they're categorized by how and where they are joined, uh, whether they're, and I'm not going to get the pronunciations of these correct, so I'm going to skip them, but whether they're joined at the upper chest, to lower chest, at the lower chest, or belly, at the abdomen, at the back. Um, the craniopagus has fused skulls, but separate bodies. And so those twins' heads could be conjoined at the back or the front or the side, but not on the face. Um, in addition, we think that conjoined twin rates within human beings is one in somewhere between 50 and 100 and, or 50 and 200,000 births. Um, it's a little more specific than that, but that's a good approximation. And roughly half of them are stillborn in humans. And about a third of, of those that aren't stillborn still die within 24 hours. So you're looking at a very low rate where conjoined twins survive. And because of that, we have traditionally not done a very good job of how we treat conjoined twins. We still refer to them uh, or trying to refer, trying to get more and more people to refer to them as conjoined twins rather than some of the other terms that we've had throughout the years. But you see a two-headed snake, it's a two-headed snake. You see a person or two people who are conjoined in some way, you wouldn't generally think to call them a two-headed person, although it happens. Um, the, this difference in how we describe things is the, the thing that originally intrigued me once I got past the genetics or beyond uh, the biology of this. I, as somebody who keeps and breeds and raises reptiles, um, a part of me would kind of love to produce a two-headed snake, for example. Uh, but we don't know what the quality of life is for a two-headed snake. We know that most of them are going to die. Some of them have lived for many years. Some of them have been um, sold. Some of them are on display at various places. Some of them are, are used for scientific experiments. Um, BHP reptiles at the Reptarium 
uh, has Ben and Jerry, who are two conjoined snakes. Whether you call it a two-headed snake or a conjoined snake is, is not really my concern, but the fact that you're going to pick one of them is kind of the reason that I made this video. There's a number of different explanations for how and why you get conjoined twins. The what seems to be the most accepted explanation now is fission, essentially that a fertilized egg will split into uh, twins, but not fully split. And so how that splitting process fails uh, determines what sort of conjoined twin you're likely to have. We not only describe them by the parts of the body that are generally fused together, um, but also other characteristics like for example, parasitic twins are twins that are um, generally asymmetric, where one twins, like they've got one heart between them, so they're both dependent on the shared heart as opposed to having two hearts independently. Um, the most famous, once upon a time, the most famous set of conjoined twins were, were Chang and Ang Bunker, um, who were joined basically kind of at the waist by something that may have been able to be separated had they been born, uh, you know, much later where medical technology was better. But I would think that uh, the picture I just showed a little bit ago of uh, Abby and Brittany Hensel, they might be the most famous conjoined twins of all time, mainly because they've had, you know, they're, they've been on Oprah. They were had their own Discovery Channel and TLC shows, I think. Uh, off and on. And they are, you know, just adult women that were born in 1990. They're currently 33. Um, for those curious, you can go find out details. Um, they have two heads, two spines that are merging at the coccyx. They have completely separate spinal cords. They have two arms. There was originally a third vestigial arm that was removed surgically. They have one big broad rib, rib cage, uh, two breasts, two hearts, four lungs, um, two stomachs, two gallbladders, uh, one liver, a Y-shaped small intestine, one large intestine, three kidneys, two on the left side, one on the right, one bladder, a, one set of reproductive organs, um, and a slightly broader pelvis and two legs. There's a couple other things, but the the parents decided not to make any attempt to separate them. And they're now 33 years old. They have driver's license and, you know, function for all the people who are talking about, you know, how we're going to look at and deal with issues like this. There's a good case to be made that we have essentially two people. Everything that I would identify as two people conjoined fits better than one person divided. Um, also, we know from um, studies on the brain that you can, for example, sever the corpus callosum and wind up with two individual personalities distinct in their likes and preferences within a single brain. So it's possible to get two things that I would, um, and I think most of us, if you were having sort of a black box conversation with somebody, to result in a position where there are two people who are absolutely sharing one, what would ordinarily be one human body, right down to one brain, but the brain uh, gets severed, and so you end up with two different personalities. But it's not always been easy to draw the line um, because of the number of different ways that twins can be conjoined. With most other animals, we tend to say, oh, that's a two animal, two headed animal. But it's different for different humans. Um, there was, in 2006, in Indonesia, uh, a baby girl was born that they named Shafridi, or Shafitri. Um, and they gave the baby, or babies, one name, because even though there were two heads, there was only one heart. And that was their determining factor with how to view their children or child as a single agent. Uh, a... In uh, Germany, conjoined twins that couldn't be separated were considered one person. And um, this is a picture of Millie and Christine McCoy. Um, 
who were sometimes referred to in the singular and sometimes in the in the plural by themselves. Sometimes they'd go by Millie Christine as a single name. Um, and so whether or not they referred to themselves or other people referred to them as uh, two people or one person, it seemed variable. The question, apart from allowing you to do some introspection into how you choose to identify individuals or groups with these conditions is part of the exercise. What makes something better described or best described as a two-headed X versus conjoined twins? I think conjoined twins would always be the more obviously correct for everything, whether it's snakes or turtles or people. But the other question from the atheist doing the atheist debates video is this. Why, in a world with a God, would this ever be a thing? Yes, 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 I know. I was, I was raised Southern Baptist, and I've heard all about the fall. It's a fallen world. It's a sinful world. Man's disobedience brought sin and death into the world. Yes, I, I get that. But even under that model, why would this be a thing? And specifically, I'm talking about the conjoined twin thing itself. You have a wide variety of presentations of this condition, parasitic twins and conjoined twins joined in different places, some of whom may be capable of being separated, but only under modern medical knowledge wouldn't have been able to be separated in the past. Others that can't possibly be separated uh, because they depend on each other. And so this raises issues of bodily autonomy, agency, rights, freedoms. How many agents are there? What right does each one of them have over the shared parts of the body? What right does each one of them have over the individual uh, parts that they control and they are responsible for? Um, what rights are there to separation and under what conditions and circumstances? This doesn't raise issues related to our sinful nature. It's not a punishment upon humanity. It's just a lot of ignored death accompanied by occasional curiosities and having people who are ogled at sideshows. How weird this world is, is what's being presented here not how sinful we are. Nobody learns a lesson from this. It shows not how we messed up. It shows how uncaring the universe is and how mechanical evolution and genetics and reproduction can be. Twinning, including conjoined twinning, is consistent with the facts of biological evolution and the uncaring mechanical processes of DNA replication with errors and complications, as are countless other conditions that we mostly never hear about or think about because offspring don't tend to live. Yes, we'll see medical journals publishing statistics, but it raises issues that mostly nobody has to deal with. And despite all of that, there's a 17th century catechism which gave instructions for baptizing based on whether or not, well, should there be distinct heads and distinct chests, then this means there are separate people. Essentially, if we got a, two separate brains and two separate hearts, those are distinct people who must be baptized normally. If the heads and chest are not completely distinct from each other, then one person must be baptized normally. But baptism of the other should be preluded by the formula, if not already baptized. So the church had to come up with, how do we go about baptizing people who are conjoined? Is it based on how many limbs, how many heads, how many brains, how many hearts, how many lungs? When do we consider someone autonomy, autonomous? And it's a difficult question. It doesn't surprise me that the church had to come down somewhere on it, but this is something that would largely be ignored. So few, <coughs> excuse me, so few survive. So few are born at all, and so few survive that they are immediate curiosities. And so, supposedly, our sinful nature results in something like this. When what's resulted is evidence for evolution. 
evidence for a mechanical, unguided process that is going to occasionally have mistakes in replication, occasionally have mistakes in twinning. This is evolution in action at highly unlikely rates, which are consistent with the error rates that we would predict knowing how genetics works. And the language we use to describe these conditions speaks volumes about our bias toward brain, about our bias towards the self, about our bias towards humans and how we're going to talk about humans in a different way than we talk about other animals. And that provides something to think about. So how are you going to classify a two-headed snake or a conjoined twin snake? And is it okay to just continue to not have a good enough understanding of the physical, mechanical world to, to blatantly deny that while suggesting that anomalies that occur in the process of reproduction have something to do with how we all pissed off God once upon a time. See you next time. Bye-bye.